Chapter 5, 8.34 p.m. What were we even doing last time? When Lynn lost her life for the second time, she was being detained, unsuspicioned about murder, but I saved her, hoping to solve my own mystery. Living creatures can choose to live their lives in one of two ways. They can either submit to their fate or they can try to change it. Lynn is definitely in the second camp. As soon as I got back to the junkyard superintendent's office, this fact was really brought home to me. Fool! We told you not to let the suspect out of your sight. My apologies, sir, but I never th thought she would run away. Lynn is our angel. I mean, friend. I mean, she's like family to us. Angel, friend, or family? They all run when they have the chance. Do you have any idea how many years it's been since my wife ran away? I'm very sorry. You have n I have no idea, sir. Oh, you'll never make detective at that rate. Now find Lynn. Yes, sir. If Inspector Cabanella gets word of this, it's all over. I mean, did you also have your wife detained? Because that might explain some things. So, our red-headed detective escaped, did she? But I just barely saved her a few minutes ago. Phew, she's fast. Well, I guess I'll look around for leads. Was this... Kettle here? Always? Or is this new? Alright, let's see. We're right now on the phone again, so... We need to... Transport over... Close spout lid? Notebook? This book up here at the top is now marked up. How do we find leads on where she may have gone? Maybe she just went downstairs? Because, I mean, otherwise, where could she have just, like, straight up run off to? Alright, what did this have to say? That old pigeon man. Do you suppose she's carrying out some sort of research here? Look at all these precious instruments and complicated devices. Hmm? What is he looking at? This trash compactor, maybe? What are you doing? Sir, I think I... Maybe this is how Lynn escaped. Through here. Whoa. I didn't even notice that the first time. She couldn't possibly fit in that tiny little elevator. Oh, I don't know, sir. Lynn is pretty slim. <laughs> well, don't you know that women can make themselves appear slim through fashion? To this day, I still don't know how much my wife really weighs. I'm very sorry. I had no idea, sir. <laughs> huh. You'll never make detective at that rate. Anyway, where is that old pigeon man? Oh, him, sir? He went through the door behind me, sir. It won't open. Apparently that door leads to the basement, but it's currently locked, sir. These instruments, they're all very suspicious. You better keep your eye on that old man, too. Yes, sir! Alright, so we think he's... We need to at least check down there, right? Okay, there's a microscope to examine and photos. Which I think we did that before, but let's take a look. I have no idea what this instrument's for. As a matter of fact, this whole desk is filled with things I've never seen. I know I've lost my memory, but still... That old pigeon man seems like a pretty strange guy. These photos look pretty old. Pictures of fragments of rock. That old pigeon guy has some pretty strange taste in wall decor. And eccentric, you know? He doesn't want to get all his stuff from Pottery Barn. Just like half of it, maybe. Ooh, ooh. What just happened there? Do we maybe need to put attention back on this again? Let's see. Open this. I want to read it. Or read it to me, really. It's a little bedtime story. Huh? This is Lynn's book. If I give this back to her, she, it might spark something between us. Hmm. What to do? What to do? This is a very complicated matter. What have you got there? What? This? Oh, uh, this, uh, um... Wait a minute, is that... Yes, sir. It's Lynn's notebook. Notebook, huh? Come to think of it, there is something about that in the report. Something about her looking at her notebook and making a phone call. Hmm. 
This must be it. This telephone number with the big circle around it. Aren't you curious to know who she was calling? I am. I really am, sir. I'd like to know. Oh, but I don't have any ulterior motive of wanting to know, though. No, sir. No, sir. This number might be an important lead. I'd better check it out. Ooh. Turn that up. <laughs> Get in there! Get in there! Hello? To whom am I speaking to, please? Yes, hello? This is a criminal investigation. We need your cooperation. Hey, I know that voice. Is that you, Detective McCaw? Oh, is that you, Officer Bailey? What's up, sir? You don't usually call this late. Oh, uh, did you get a call from one of our detectives, Lynn, earlier? From Lynn? Yes, I did. She calls every night. Maybe she senses it's about to happen. Did she say anything special? No, not really. Is something wrong? Yes, well, I'm... I may be contacting you again if I have any other questions. That posture on Detective Bailey. Oh, okay. So we didn't need to go downstairs? I want to know more about the Pigeon Man! I'm going to file the report down at the station. I need you to be vigilant here. Excuse me, Detective, but... What is it? That notebook. Would you mind if I gave... Uh, never mind, sir! Hmm. Just stay on your toes. Oh, Can I go back in time and give him a chance? He tried to order her some chicken when she was feeling a little famished. I don't know if I actually need to be down here more, but I would like to see if I can see the dialogue with this guy. It might just be time to clean this room up, but will that close the matter? Her appearance here, of all places, and tonight, of all times, I hardly think it's a coincidence. Hardly think it's a coincidence. I mean, no, it's probably also related to Cecil. Do you know me? Curious. All right, let's go take this phone call. I think we just need to go back over to this new place. All right, there's two cops in here. He is he having red wine? Hello? What was that call about? I heard you say Lynn. I don't really know. If I had to take a guess, though, I would probably say something's going on with her. <laughs> the only place in the world where nothing is going on is inside your brain, Bailey. Oh, oh my god, the way he's sitting. Bailey, you're an icon. What is that supposed to mean? I mean, I know what the words mean. That's not what I'm asking. That was my way of expressing indignation, putting it in the form of a question. Bailey, why do you sit like that? Are you okay? I just hope Lynn's not doing anything crazy. And my and I'm a fan of hers, you know. According to my log, Lynn has been calling here nearly every night as of late. So let's see. This is a place Lynn took all that risk to call, huh? But what exactly is this place? It looks like it's the security office of the prison? Hmm. Oh, he's standing. He's on the move. I think we need to go with him. Oh. Maybe? There you go. Can we examine this? Let loose. No, we need to go up this, so we don't want to let that loose. Well, let's take a look at this monitor. The screen shows rows of 50 tiny rooms. The rooms are really, really small, and you can see right into them from the outside. Suppose the open bars keep the rooms airy, but wouldn't want to live in one myself. I wonder where these little rooms are. We can't see the other monitor from here, so maybe we do gotta... Where's this gonna go? Whee! Oh, thanks! Hey, what's this? Oh, that? I wrote down my duties for the night, so I wouldn't forget any of them. 
You can't keep him in your head. It's not like you have a ton of duties after all. Use a little brain power. <laughs> what are you talking about? Weren't you the one who just said nothing was going on inside my brain? Hmm, didn't think you'd take it in quite that direction. So, let's see. This important to-do list of yours. 9 o'clock. Take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. 9 o'clock, huh? That's when Len usually calls. Well, we can't let her talk to him tonight. Rules are rules. Aw, oh, poor Lynn. Sure, wish could I could come for her. Oh, wait, no! I need to stay over there! Oh. Oh no, what did I do? Oh, what do you think you're doing? That's my important duties memo. That's okay, I've got it all memorized for you. Well, it's your duty to guard the telephone room, you know. Just make sure you do your job when the time comes. Uh-oh. <gasps> Who dis? <gasps> Hello? Uh, Lynn? I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Please let me talk to him. Uh, I'm sorry, Detective. I can't do that tonight. Y you can't? But you always let me talk to him before... Well, uh, the telephone room is already reserved. That's why. Oh. By the way, is something going on with you tonight? What? Why do you ask? I got a call from one of the other detectives a minute ago asking about you. Uh, oh, really? Well, I don't think it's anything important. Officer Bailey? Do you think you could keep this call just between us? Even if only for tonight? Well, I... Oh. Well, I gotta go. I'll call again tomorrow. Ooh, where is she? Oh boy. Well, I guess I better call the detective division. You're gonna rat us out? Bailey, come on. Hold on there, Bailey. What? Don't tell me you're gonna report that call from Lynn. What else can I do? It's my duty. Just write it down on one of your important to-do lists, and then I can wad it up for you and throw it away. <laughs> you mean, you want me to keep quiet about it? Well, isn't that what she asked you to do? Well, yes, but... Tonight's kind of a special case for us. Can't you make a special exception for my Lynn, too? Ugh... Special case, huh? Alright, you win. Hmm. I don't know what they think is special about tonight, but for me, it's my only night. Lynn is the other end of that telephone line. I better hurry. This is getting spicy. What's going on here? I'm so sad I missed that opportunity, but I think we just needed to go find Lynn anyways. We will be back. Wait. No way. No way! Who did this? Lin! Lin! Oh, why couldn't it have been me instead? I'm no use as a police officer. It should have been me! It looks like she's dead. But we'd better not touch her. Who did this? Who shot Lin? Hey, excuse me, mister. You talking to me? Whoa. This room, there aren't any other exits besides this one, are there? Do you see one? Huh? Then how did... We must have one of those mysterious locked room murder cases in our hands. One of those cases where the murderer vanishes into the air in a vacuum. Just go find a real detective. I'll keep watch here. Yes, sir. It was the pigeon. Ugh, what a terrible turn of events. 
So, now a locked room murder, huh? Things never get dull for our redhead. I know of a certain inspector who might dance around at the thought of a mystery. But no mysteries for me. Now when I can rewind time and talk to the victim herself. Guess it's time to go back and see the truth behind this murder with my own eyes. Hmm. Can I reach that? Oh, there you go. I can't believe she died three times tonight already. I'm talking about the worst day for her. Oh, no, never mind. She seems to be enjoying it, actually. <laughs> I died again. I thought you'd be a little more grave under the circumstances. <laughs> well, this is the third time, after all. It's scary what a girl can get used to, don't you think? Frankly, the way her mind works is a whole heck of a lot scarier to me. So, what happened this time? Who shot you? I don't know. What? I'd like to know myself, but who could have done it? Who shot me? What are you asking me for? Oh boy, I guess I'll have to just go find him for myself. Okay, you go do that. Hurry along now. I get the distinct impression I'm being used here. Okay, looks like it's time to go back. Back to four minutes before your death. Ooh, okay. It's crazy we, like, in the time that she was just on the phone with the cop. Or with the security officer. She, she died. Okay, 8.44. Four minutes before her death. I wonder if maybe no one shot her and, like, some accident happened to this weird room? How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? I once thought the truth could be discovered in darkness. But maybe it was just that the time wasn't right. So, this is where she disappeared to. She was just in this room below. Oh. <gasps> oh. She was in the trash, or the elevator. <laughs> you know, that was only four steps, but he couldn't, he couldn't be bothered to take them. Young up. <gasps> Ooh. Why did he hang up? He didn't say anything, right? Oh no, what is this? Oh, beautiful. <gasps> okay, it lights the- what? Is it gonna light that? <gasps> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's crazy. So Pigeon Man knows exactly what happened here. That's the truth behind our locked room murder? So the murderer was a mechanical murder machine? A murder machine? When I came into the room, it was pitch dark, so I turned on the light. That must have been what set it off. The murder machine, I mean. Can you please stop repeating the words murder machine? That old pigeon guy must have made it, but why? What could be the meaning behind this weird room? Anyway, you'll have to find some way to stop that creepy machine. Once Cupid fires his arrow, it's all over. So I can stop her from turning on the light? I can... Stop him from going upstairs. Hmm. You know what, Cecil? I think this death might be easier to prevent than the others. Well, why is that? You know, because the murderer is mechanical. She has a point. I can't manipulate living creatures, but I can manipulate this machine. Now I just gotta figure out how to stop it. When the four minutes ago me turns on the light, and that's when the murder machine is set into motion, apparently. It looks like the key is to solving this one is understanding this device. Oh, uh, okay, so I'm in her soul right now. I need to wait till he comes by so I can get elsewhere, first of all. So we'll start with that. How long has it been since I locked this room up in darkness? Oh. How long has it been? Okay, so we can jump here. Oh. Where else can we go with him, though? 
<laughs> and then he's gonna blow out the candle. Do I die? No. Because we're the lamp right now, not necessarily. And then he gets a call from the guy upstairs. Oh, it's not working because we're in the four minutes. Oh my gosh, every time. I was thinking though, that since he got a call, that that would be important this time, but we can't do anything about that anyways. Okay, they blow it out, and then... Oh, I don't want to travel. I don't travel with him. I have no way. I guess I have to wait here until she goes into the room. How did you manage to cram yourself into a tiny elevator? I've always liked small, cramped places. Whenever I see a little hole or crevice, I always like feel like crawling in. The place I feel most at home is that space between my bed and the wall. Yeah, I guess I can understand that. Ah, we're birds of a feather. We should get together and talk about it sometime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Oh. So what happens if he's actively on the phone and I jump in it? Hmm, because that is the only thing I can jump in right now. Time is passing, time is passing. So he's gonna answer it. Oh yeah, cause whenever he called the chicken place, I was able to jump there. So I should be able to do that now. Oh, oh, is this a superintendent? I'm so glad, I thought I was all alone. <laughs> and then he doesn't say anything. So then he literally just hung up, that's so funny. Okay, so we're gonna go here. I don't think I want him to stay down there. He reacts to the kettle burning him, but I don't know how that would make a difference. Maybe he would call back if I do this. We could try. So let's close this first and then. Oh, never mind. That's how kettles work. I didn't get to see his dialogue. Lynn ran away, and the detectives yelled at me. The old pigeon man ignored me, and then the kettle nearly scared me to death. My life is in complete shambles. That's gratitude for you. We were just trying to warn him with the kettle whistle. Would he have preferred getting scalded by the steam? Well, at least his fate was changed a bit. That's good anyway. Oh, okay, good for him. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so now he brought us closer to the ground though. So, we got we got some cooking to do. Unfortunately, we can't move from any of these positions. There's nothing to activate down here. Oh, I'm still stuck in this kettle too. So maybe we have to wait till she turns the light on though, and then we can start moving somehow. Like, we just have to get to the gun before it shoots her. Oh no! Okay, we gotta get to the ball. And then what happens? There it goes! The murder machine has started! And if the whole thing plays out, that gun on the wall will go off. But before that happens, it's up to, my, you, up to me to use my ghost tricks. There must be some way to disrupt the domino effect. You just have to find it. Here it goes! gotta be this one open the toolbox move the hoist uh okay so maybe we open this first oh shit oh sh <gasps> what did that do did i do that out of the wrong order move this i'm stuck now oh no i should have gone back in the ball wait the ball's stuck The ball was not stuck. Oh no. Okay, the toolbox did something. The key to this murder machine is that cheeky little Cupid who fires the arrow. But wait a minute, that swing and shovel. I wonder if that can be used as a weapon somehow against Mr. Mr. Cupid? Okay, back to the fate change. I, I don't know if I needed that hoist. Okay, but we'll stay in the ball for now. So what ended up moving the ball? Oh, I guess the ball hit... The ball hit the balls. Okay, 
Okay, so this present is going up. So maybe I need to do that instead. Oh, I can't unfreeze anything. Okay, we're in the ball. Here's the shovel. But then what? Oh, I'm stuck over here again. So at this point, I get stuck. Oh, wait, okay. I fall, but then I roll away. Hmm, over here? So maybe the shovel needs to fall at a certain point. If we need to restart the fate change again. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I want to look around is the problem. Without starting it. Okay, hopefully this is okay. Oh, it's not. Okay, so we're over here. The ball will fall over into the bowl, so I think I want to wait to open this toolbox. Like when it's on the floor, maybe? Oh, I don't know about that. <gasps> like that! Where? Hey, that was a pretty good just now. Maybe if we were on a potting green. Well, with a swing like that, maybe we could put it to some use here. Good thinking. I just might be able to use this trick somehow. Mm, there's a trap door. If I could change the path the ball takes. That's a great idea and all, but it looks like we're all out of time this round. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess we better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. Hmm. Maybe we move the hoist first? She turns that on. Because I don't think I could ever get to this... Yeah, I can't get to that box. So let's try moving this and then... Let's see what this does for us. Oh, uh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Maybe? <gasps> Come on! Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the... If that hoist does anything, really, in the beginning, but we'll see. She sneaks in. I wish I could watch this... Ooh, ...play out... ...at some points, and not have to feel like I need to go through it. Because otherwise I'm just doing it very repetitively. Okay, let's do this. Let's try this. We have to wait for the ball. Oh, wait, can the hoist bring me somewhere? I don't think so. I have to wait to open this. Oh! Okay. We do this. What am I in? No. Because I can be in the ball, but not in the same time it's rolling. Or I have to stay in the toolbox, toolbox until that whole action finishes off. I knew this was going to be a struggle when she was like, Oh, this will be the easiest one. Because it's all mechanical. Listen, uh, I'm not a mad scientist. In case you haven't noticed. I'm dead and I don't even know what a microscope is. Alright, so... I mean, I know I need to hit it. Maybe I need to watch this playthrough again and see what I can witness. We can go to this, a toy cake. We can, uh, the balance toy. So what does this do? Oh, I know this toy. The wheel spins and moves up and down the pole. 
Hey, look, there's a thread attached to it. It loops around the clock and is tied to the frame the gun is in. And it seems to be connected to our fiery Mr. Cupid as well. This toy seems to be the heart of the entire mechanism. But inertia is surprisingly powerful. I can't stop it once it's set into motion. Mm-hmm. We can open this. Cupid is already on the move. I can't really go back. I, ha I can go back there, actually, when the ball is already... Before the ball starts rolling. So I kind of missed my window here. Oh, since the door is open, it opened up. So the ball is going to move upwards. Gotcha. Okay. Hopefully that got me to absorb all the information I needed to do. But yeah, I was very stuck on that first little segment. But we need to jump all the way to the end first and work our way backwards almost in order to stop this. I don't know what the hoist does, but I think we're going to move it anyways. <laughs> So we can go here first? No. I think no matter what, we have to go over here. I am going to move this just because it's available. Go here, go this. Okay, let's do- let's uh, move this first. I'm scared I'm going to miss my opportunity. Okay, so move it. And then, can you get to the door yet? Oh, I missed my opportunity again because I can't get to the ball. So I would have to do the door first and then this. How did I get to the door before? Oh. If I open this, yeah, I have no way of getting over there. So we have to start over again. Okay, but I think we're close, right? I know that I have to wait until it gets to the left side. I don't think I have any way of getting down there until the ball goes all the way around. Double, double check. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here we are. We're gonna move. Move! Move the hoist. Move back down here. Oh no, okay. Oh gosh, okay. Open the door, maybe I don't need to move the... That's already moving, okay. Hopefully this works. Oh, I moved it too early, no! A disaster! Okay, so that's gonna move on its own. I have no reason to move this little balance toy. I just have to wait for the timing for it to hit that ball and not get stressed out. Oh my god! I know, I know, I'm struggling out here in these parts. Okay. Oh wait, I think I could have gotten it. Again, I don't know what the hoist does, but we're gonna move it. I hate how it says two seconds from this point. It's so scary. Okay, let's get let's be the ball. We open this. The door or the balance toy is gonna take care of itself. We have to wait till this is on the floor before actioning, right? Oh god. Okay, now. Is it too late? Oh no. <gasps> what? Yo. What just happened? It looks like your future just got a whole lot rosier. Your death has been erased again. I, uh, thank you. You kept your promise, didn't you, Cecil? My promise? You said you I'd see you again if I died. I don't remember making any promises. It's all for my own benefit anyway. Fate averted. What could this be room be all about? Hmm, I can't imagine. Those things that went off at the end were the party poppers, weren't they? Party poppers? I have no recollection of what they are, but that's no surprise. 
The party poppers. The gun going off. It seems familiar somehow. I'll leave that part of the puzzle to you. I have my own puzzle to figure out. Well, shall we go back now? Back to your new present? That one was stressful. It's interesting though that we that didn't involve actually stopping someone. Sissel, are you there? Lynn is talking to me? If you're there, could you say something? If you're not there, I guess I'm uh, just a weird girl who talks to herself. Well, you c are kind of a weird girl, whether you talk to yourself or not. Oh. What can we say to her? We can't go- we can't go into her core. She's alive still. Or she's alive again. Oh! Oh! It does work. You are here! I knew it! I just had that feeling. Shame on you for stepping foot into a girl's head uninvited. Wait a minute. Don't give me that a ghost doesn't have feet bit. It's just a figure of speech. Hey, did I say anything? There! That tone! It's that tone of yours that makes me mad. So, did you have a particular... something particular you want to say to me? I just thought I'd share some information with you. I'm investigating a case right now. A murder case, and I'm doing it alone. A murder case? All by yourself? Yes, well, it, that's because the case was closed a long time ago. The culprit is already behind bars, forgotten by the world. So, why are you looking into it then? Because I think the person's innocent, that's why. There's something strange about this case, some big mystery. I firmly believe that. So anyway, I finally have my memory back. I'm not at liberty to tell you about the case. But if there's anything else you want to know, I'll try to answer what I can. Lynn is my only lead. I would like to ask her about a few things. Hmm. Okay, about the one who shot me. You have your life and your memory back now. So let me ask you again. Who shot me tonight? Yeah, I thought that might be the first thing on your mind. What else would it be? There's a good chance I was shot while I was with you after all. I'm afraid my memory is just isn't clear on that part. Not clear? I met you tonight, and then you fell down right in front of me. I think I remember seeing that part. I'm pretty sure you were shot. Maybe from somewhere far away? So you didn't see the culprit? I'm sorry. I wish I could be of more help. But I know I wasn't the one who shot you. Your colleague seems to think you're a suspect, though. I wanted the information you had for me, so why would I shoot you before I got it? Information, huh? I wonder what info I have for her. Hmm. So... We potentially knew this person that's already in jail? Is what it seems, and like the person that she's been calling every night. By the way, I see you have a little roommate. Camilla? How do you know her? There was a tying incident in your apartment a little while ago. An incident? What kind of incident? What happened? Is Camilla alright? She's fine. I think to, thanks to her loyal little friend Missile. Although I did have a little trouble bringing him back to life. Oh my! What in the world is going on? Why would anyone want to hurt Camilla and Missile? You're being targeted by a certain organization. What? I saw them. The people who were calling you their target. So, I'm a suspect and a target. Could this night possibly get any worse? It does sound pretty rough. Are you sure you'll be okay on your own? Huh? You know what they say, when it rains, it pours. Isn't it time you admitted to me you need my powers? I'm sorry, I can't cooperate with you. Yes, you saved my life tonight. Completely grateful for that. But as a detective, I still can't trust you. That's too bad. Hmm. I mean, she has no remembrance of why she was trying to talk to us so what if she went back to figure that out because like maybe we were had good information for her so i had some important information that you wanted huh that's right you called the station yesterday and you asked to talk to me you told me you had an important lead on the case i was working on important lead huh you said that you wanted to meet me and talk to me directly tonight at the junkyard and you fell for it even given how fishy it sounds you're the last person I want to hear that from, you know. But I just couldn't let it go, no matter how shady it seemed. And that's because I'm running out of time. Hey, that's right. You said something was going down tonight. 
Does that something have to do with the case you're working on? I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. Oh boy, but I guess I should understand. Oh, we heard everything. Now what? So, what are you going to do now? Run, I guess. They'll catch me again if I don't get out of here. And I have to get to the restaurant. I'm worried about Camilla. Oh, yeah. What was it? Oh, the chicken kitchen at Dead End Drive, right? What about you, Sissel? What are you going to do? I don't know, to tell you the truth. You're my only leave. If you leave... I just realized you and I are in the same boat. We're both looking for answers tonight, and neither of us has anyone to help us. That about sums it up. Hey, even if you can't cooperate with me, how about if we just agree to use each other? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. You're on. Wouldn't literally using each other be cooperation? If you're just co... I don't, I don't know. If you're both benefiting from a situation of using each other, in a sense, isn't that cooperation? <laughs> But I can't ask you to do a favor for- Can I ask you to do a favor for me first? What's that? I need you to sneak into a certain place for me. A prison, to be exact. Prison? That's the place I was calling for the office upstairs. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. A work schedule? For a prisoner? Yes, the prisoners are given different job details every day. Each prisoner's schedule for the next day is written on a small blackboard in his cell. So, just go check on us. Certain prisoner's blackboard, huh? Okay. His prisoner's number is D99. And if you do that for me, I'll cooperate with you. Okay, you're on. So that's not the same prisoner that was trying to make a phone call that doc that uh, Bailey was talking about. Okay, see you later. See ya. But don't die again, if you can help it. If you can help it. Insinuating that she uh, could help it the first couple times. Ray's pleased. It looks like I hold the key to the case Lynn is investigating. And she holds the key to solving the mystery of me. So we started a strange cooperation. Lynn gave me an assignment. My task is to go check out tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99. I better get to the prison. We did it! It's so interesting that that whole, like, just like, she got murdered by not a person, but we still have to solve it. We still have to stop it. So I guess next time we need to go back to the prison and try to figure out who, first of all, this person's work schedule is. And, but she was calling someone different. I could have sworn. So it seems that there may be two prisoners of interest here. And, but... You know, well, the question is why? And what is their connection to this whole case? I'm curious if Ray has some sort of stock in this whole in this whole mystery as well. Um, because he, I don't know. He just seemed really excited to see Lynn still alive and uh, on her way to, to solve this whole case. And also, what is the importance of this case to Lynn and Cecil? Like, how are these all intertwined and connected with each other? Um, but yeah, we'll get kind of one step closer, see who is also involved in this case and kind of start unraveling it from there.